Hello and welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. If you're here for the first time, thank you for choosing to tune in. So I'm here with an update from Prince Harry's High Court hearing concerning his security in the UK. So the article says here, Prince Harry is challenging the government's decision to scale back his police protection during visits to the UK after the royal stepped back from being a senior working member of the royal family and relocated to the US. While most cases are open to the members of the British public and the press, Harry's legal battle was bound by a privacy order, a copy of which has been obtained. So the document said, quote, public disclosure of information regarding such matters as the level of threat assessments and those for whom such assessments have been carried out. It also added, quote, if specific protective security tactics, in quotes, were heard in public, it would, in the words of case judge Mr. Justice Lane, self-evidently be of interest to anyone wishing to harm a person within the scope of the security arrangements and would assist them to piece together previous practice with a view to anticipate present or future security provision, in quotes. So Harry's latest hearing over his security arrangements in the UK started on Tuesday at London's High Court. Lawyers for the Duke of Sussex were seeking to prove that he was, quote, treated unfairly when the royalty and VIP executive committee ruled he no longer qualified for the, quote, same degree of protection given to members of the British royal family. Mr. Justice Lane, the judge, added in his privacy order issued on Monday entitled Duke of Sussex v. Secretary of State for the Home Department this, quote, I have examined the party's respective skeleton arguments. It is apparent from these that the material that needs to be protected in the interests of justice is very tightly entangled with the less sensitive details required for the court to properly determine the claim. This means that the bulk of the hearing must be heard in private, end quote. So let's get into what was discussed today. That's just a quick preamble. So we have some interesting uh, details that have come out. Today, Prince Harry's witness statement was read at the end of his high court hearing, where he challenged the decision to remove his automatic security in the UK. In his written statement, Prince Harry described how both he and Meghan felt forced, in quotes, to leave the royals, something that caused them both, quote, great sadness, in quotes. Prince Harry's barrister told the court his decision to leave for the U.S. was not a choice, in quotes. Most of the case has been heard in private, as I said, due to the confidentiality reasons. Harry argued the decision to take away his police protection was not taken correctly and that it was unfair and unreasonable. So in his written statement, Prince Harry said this, quote, It was with great sadness for both of us that my wife and I felt forced to step back from this role and leave the country in 2020. The UK is my home, and the UK is central to the heritage of my children. It is a place I want them to feel at home as much as where they live in the United States. This cannot happen if it is not possible to keep them safe when they are on UK soil. I cannot put my wife in danger like that. And given my experiences in life, I am reluctant to unnecessarily put myself in harm's way too." End quote. These are strong words from Harry and give a real sense of his frustration, said SkyNews.com. They say they also paint a picture of a family willing to visit the UK, but seemingly unable to do so. And there could be one other issue in this legal case. The Home Office said Prince Harry had left it too late to bring his case. So that will be for the judge to decide and a final judgment will be due at a later date. So what do you think of Prince Harry's statement? What a strong statement. And as I've said before on this channel, I've always had a sense that, yes, though Prince Harry does call the U.S. his home and, you know, it's his adopted home, but there is still a desire in his heart for his children to know his own birth home, the U.K., and also allow me here to quickly note that Prince Harry in a statement said that, quote, it was with great sadness to both of us that my wife and I felt forced to step back from this role 
and leave the country in 2020, end quote. So that was in a statement. And there has been so much discourse online saying that he and Meghan had always planned to step away and people trying to point to his statement where he and Meghan stepped back, saying that it was after months of consideration. But we have to remember that Prince Harry spoke about the culture of leaking and he did not want to be a part of the game. Forced does not mean it had to be anything dramatic. Forced speaks to how they felt like they were cornered and had to just step away from that toxic environment with some of the press that were going after Meghan and also just the hate online, the hate in the comment sections on their uh, Sussex Royal page. And remember that Harry and Meghan wanted to have a half in, half out arrangement, which was turned down. So it's quite clear that he and Meghan always wanted to support how they could in their capacity as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. They wanted to serve the Queen and the Commonwealth with Meghan. And in the end, that was turned down as well. So you can see there was a lot of being kind of forced out, being pushed out. Remember with Frogmore Cottage, how some segments of the press stirred up that sentiment about renovations and they paid that back too. So that kind of hostile kind of coverage, you can't say that they felt completely comfortable in that environment. So Remember, they always wanted the half in, half out. They wanted to, according to what Harry said in his documentary, they had discussed him and Meghan going to South Africa. That was leaked. They also wanted to be in Canada. That didn't work out. And in the end, they were staying in the U.S. first and foremost under the care and love of Tyler Perry, who, who stepped in for them, paying for their protection as well. So, you know, you can't say that it was a plan from the get-go if Tyler Perry was just having to swoop in, you know, as some kind of <laughs> masked Zorro in the wings to kind of help the couple out. They had to leave Canada, their security was withdrawn and all of that. So yes, there was an element where it makes sense for him to say that they were forced out. You know, they're, they no longer have Frogmore Cottage. So I think that speaks to the toxic environment with the press, with talking about the culture of the leaking and briefing that was going on there at in the palaces with some of the aides. I mean, ask yourselves right now, how was it that in a whole headline, it was written that Meghan made Kate cry? Obviously, the leaking and the briefing, the hatred, and also, you know, them being denied the opportunity to continue serving with that half in, half out suggestion. So yes, you could tell that they were kind of being boxed out and away. So, so share your perspective on on his statement saying that he felt quote forced to step back from the role and leave the country in 2020 share your thoughts on that in the comments section below so what do you think of prince harry's statement a strong statement and as i've said before on this channel i've always had a sense that there is still a desire in his heart for his children to know his own birth home the uk and it is so much more nuanced and quite complex and people just simply saying that he has found a new home and he needs to forget about his home country. There is a whole culture there, a culture that he is proud of. And I've said it time and time again that he has strongly indicated that he wants his children to know about his birth country. And I'm sure he wants to have his kids um, embrace the culture and get to know more, study more about what they're all about you can imagine that there is a whole uh, history there for the children, not only on his father's side, but on his mother's side as well. Prince Harry does have family from the Spencer side, and I'm sure the children would also like to know that side of the family as well. So, you know, for those of you who are my audience, especially in the UK, share your thoughts on how you have received the statement, knowing that Prince Harry does have a yearning for his children, to know his home country and want them to feel safe. And also share your thoughts for everyone else all around the world. I know everyone has their points of view that are quite valid. We know for a fact that Meghan has been quite unfairly treated in some segments of the press there in the UK and there has been quite a lot of hate stirred up against her. Uh, we saw her speaking about this quite candidly. You know, there is that side and also bringing back the major concern whereby former members of the London's Metropolitan Police, who also spent time with the forces 
parliamentary and diplomatic protection branch had admitted to sending offensive and racial social media messages about Duchess Meghan and others as well. So, you know, they were investigated in a BBC investigation and it sparked an internal police inquiry. Some of them have been tried and this case has been seen repeated quite a couple of times. So that is a valid concern for sure. So yes, this is quite a complex situation, but here, this is a very strongly worded witness statement by the Duke of Sussex. And I will repeat what he said, quote, the UK is my home and the UK is central to the heritage of my children. It is a place I want them to feel at home as much as where they live in the United States. And he said that that cannot happen if it is not possible to keep them safe when they are on UK soil. End quote. So share your thoughts on that statement. It is so passionate. I feel you can actually sense that he has a desire for his family to feel safe in the UK. And remember, contrary to what we have heard in, you know, that misreporting, he had offered to pay. And, you know, there was that decision earlier in the year whereby that did not go the desired way for Prince Harry, but he was willing to pay. So, uh, you know, his barrister told the High Court on Tuesday's opening hearing, quote, the claimant's consistent position has been and remains that he should be given state security in light of the threats and risks he faces, end quote. And that's not something that they are just pulling out of the thin air. Uh, there have been threats against them, and there has been confirmation of the fact that he and Meghan have faced threats. So, to my UK audience, let's just have a discussion here. What would you like Prince Harry to do? Because he is British. He does want his children to know that side of his family. Or for those of you who are against him, you know, getting police protection, do you want him just to disown that part of him? Because that is as much his home and he wants his children to know it. And don't you want him to be safe there? Because how does it reflect on the UK when the whole world can see a prince of the realm having to go all the way to court to, to secure something that is as basic as protection? And this is someone who has received threats, he and his family. So how do you think that reflects on you? And I'm just trying here to be unbiased as possible. Let's just have a discussion in the comments, in the chat for those who you are watching. And of course, no trawling to those of you who are moderators here. So uh, be on the lookout for any comments that are not in good faith. But please, let's have a good faith discussion here. What would you like Prince Harry to do? Some of you do not want him to have protection. You do not want him to pay for it though he has offered. So what do you want him to do? What's the solution? Because he's not going to, you know, denounce that part of himself. He is going to fight for his right for him to be there and to be safe in light of the threats that he has been facing him and his family. He would like to be safe in his home country. It doesn't reflect well on the UK for you all basically not to give, you know, a hoot about what happens to him and his children. Think about those children. You would not God forbid, God forbid anything to happen to those children on your soil because you were unwilling, your government was unwilling to just make these concessions which are so basic. And it's such a strange kind of contrast when you see him and Meghan, how they are protected in other countries. He is given some type of police protection because he is a high profile public figure. And for people like that, they do need that up to date armed protection. They cannot have intelligence reports after the fact. They need those reports to be free flowing to security teams around them. I started this off talking about how the judge of this case, Mr. Justice Lane, said that there was, quote, specific protective security tactics that uh, could not be heard in public concerning this case. So if this case is to be heard in a way that is confidential because of the sensitivity of what is being discussed, that is the scope of security arrangements, that cannot be in the public domain lest, you know, some bad faith actor would use the information to anticipate present or, quote, future security provision based on what they hear. That shows that Prince Harry does not have to be a, quote, working royal for these things to be understood across the board. This is someone who has had high-level threat assessment. We've seen even the Taliban trying to put some statements out about him because of why the spin on what was written in his book. He did not brag or boast, but, you know, tell that some headlines on how they covered it and brought so much negative attention to Harry and his family. So 
for uh, people who are just listening to this, let's have a discussion. Whether you're from the UK or any country in Europe or in the Americas, in Asia, in Africa, in any of those, you would not want to see someone who is a high profile individual, someone who is as known as Prince Harry and his wife to have anything negative happening to them or their children on your soil. It would reflect so poorly on you, your government, those who serve in a policing capacity. It would reflect also quite badly on the citizens of that country. So please think about that. Consider that as well. Prince Harry said he cannot put his wife in danger. So you see, he wants them to come, but he's reluctant to do so because he's not guaranteed that up-to-date armed police protection. And I see his point of view. I agree with him. That bespoke in quotes protection that they were talking about for him, for Prince Harry and his family, that does not cut it for someone who is in the status and position of that family. So kindly, let's have a discussion. Prince Harry protected you on the front lines, so it cannot be too much to ask for you to extend yourselves because he offered to pay and that was turned down. And if it comes to that, you might have to extend yourselves to protect him. And he, remember, he's not based in the UK. That would just be only when he comes over. So it's just a couple of days out of the year. So it does reflect quite negatively on the UK and for the Ravik and, and those who in the first place took away his police protection. Remember, he inherited the risk. He was born into this. He does not have an opt out button from being who he is. He is in the line of succession. His children are and you need them to be protected. So, so much to discuss here. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Also, Prince Harry saying that he felt he was, quote, forced out. So just share your thoughts on all this in the comment section below. As always, before we log off, allow me here to thank those who support this channel financially and shout out a couple of you by name. A very special thank you to you. Diana, Anima, Sean, thank you for choosing to be so generous and kind towards my work here. I cherish you and how loving and so supportive you've been. Thank you so much for your comments and I love your inspirational messages on Twitter or X. Thank you. I follow you there as well. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. A very, very special thank you to Ray Raquel. Words can't express how I'm so moved by your giving. I'm so glad that you've chosen to accompany me here on this YouTube journey and for being a part of my work here. You are so special and I love you. God bless you. And now a very special thank you to those who gave through super thanks. A very special thank you to you, Alma Andrews, who has been so tremendous in your support for this channel. You are valued and so generous and kind. I'm so warmed by how generous you've been towards this channel, Alma. God bless you. I love you and truly appreciate you. A special thank you as well to you who gave through super thanks. Thank you to Jean Gao or is that Zhao 6633. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and that kindness through your giving. May God bless you. Thank you as well to you, Patricia Crenshaw, who is also one of the channel supporters here. Thank you. Thank you so much for how you've been so giving towards me. Thank you for always making me feel so loved and for thinking of me. Thank you for always believing in me. You are such a gift and you have been there for me throughout this year and I truly love you. Thank you. And a very special thank you to those who gave through Super Chat in the last live. A very special thank you to Black Queen, who is also one of the channel moderators. I'm so blessed to know you and thank God for you. Thank you for all the times you're in the chat and for your giving and your comments. Truly appreciate you. You mean so much to me and thank you for your thoughtful support for this channel. Thank you. And now a very special thank you to those who gave through PayPal. Thank you to Elietha Ballo. Thank you so much for giving so tremendously and generously through PayPal. I truly I really am so moved. Thank you for your generous gift. Really made me smile. Thank you for just that tremendous boost and encouragement that you've given towards my work here. I prefer God to bless you and yours. Thank you. So moved by that giving. Thank you. Once again, share your thoughts on all this news below. Keep it here for more updates. I love you all and I will catch you in the next one. Have a blessed one.